Welcome one and all to episode 13 of the FoxCast. As always, your captain of the ship, Dokes, is here to lead the way, but of course I can't run the show by myself, so I have my lovely crew with me as always. To my virtual right, I have... Oh man, if I could just see past his abs, I think I could see the man. There he is, right <laughs> before me. It is, yes, in fact, say hello to everybody, Nuvo. Nuvo Nuka here. Cheers to the highest fox power, baby. And then to my virtual left, I have the man who keeps the show on their own and keeps the show going. He is, well, you all know him, you love him. You come here to hear his voice more than anything else. Say hello to everybody, our sweet little angel, Dinah. Oh gosh, I'm like a kid here. All right, hey everyone, Dinah here. <laughs> <laughs> And, of course, we have a guest with us. Uh, this will be our first returning guest. So I am happy to welcome, once again, our founder and creator of the anime tracking website, Kitsu, and CEO of the website. Uh, say hello to everybody, Josh. Hi, everybody. It's Josh. And I'm glad you're back, man. Thanks for coming back again. Thanks for having me. Well, you, you requested it, and uh, people loved you. I think our most popular episode was the one that you were in, so it's great to have you back once again. That's because I kept refreshing the page. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> boosting your own score. Account. We thank you for that. Uh, you're, well, you're like, excellent. Everyone needs to know that I'm the best, goddammit. <laughs> and let everybody know, uh, this episode will not be your typical a guest design. We ask all questions about their personal life. Uh, Josh is going to be joining us for our typical discussion-based episode. So this will be our first time having a guest join in on the main topic, which will be a lot of fun, I'm sure. But of course, uh, let's stop dilly dallying. Let's get into it. Let's start off with our questions of the week. We had a lot of them submitted this time, so I could not choose all of them. I'm sorry. Don't have that much time. Uh, but I will save some of those for the episodes coming down here down the chute. But I did choose four. Uh, one of us each chose one. So there are several questions that we chose. If your question was not chose, it will be in the future, though, most likely. All right. So first off. This was the one that Josh chose. It's from at Broly. He asked, without getting too personal, can Josh talk a little bit about his family in general and what their thoughts are about his career choice? When you have to take care of a family, having a consistent and stable income is paramount. But when you decide to start your own business, there's a lot of risk, obviously. And you're never promised a steady paycheck. I want to know what pushed Josh in the direction to create his own business, especially one centered around an anime-related website instead of working on a normal 9-to-5 type job. Were you nervous or scared trying to start your own business? Did you have a lot of support from your family? Was Hummingbird slash Kitsu simply a passion project? Or did you intend to make this career from the start? Also, do you have any advice for people wanting to create their own business? What are some of the pros and cons? Yes, a very meaty first one. So, Josh, this is all for you. We're not all answering it, so come on, man. Tell us. All right, cool. Well, Brawley, Dr. Brawley, let me just start from the top. So, I think a lot of you guys do know, some of you don't. But I'm married. I have four kids. That's right, four. Three boys and an adorable little girl. That's sometimes tough uh, in terms of just running a business and not having like really good income anymore, uh, like I used to have at one point. I don't think I could do that if my wife wasn't as supportive as she is. She's pretty great. So that's kind of, I think, essential, right? Like, like if you're married or if you know you're relying on someone else in terms of you know your living situation. It's really important that they're on board. So I'm fortunate in that respect. Uh, in terms of like what got me there, I think that like when you're an entrepreneur, you just have something that just eats in your gut, right? And it's just like no matter what you're doing, how much money you're making, how much respect you get for doing it, eventually that like thing starts eating at your gut and you're like, shit, I need to drop everything, drop all security and make something. And that's not normal. Like, that's not like, like, it's not like something you like want to have. I think, I think if, if I could be happy in a nine to five, I would totally do that instead. Just because it'd be so much, I don't want to say easier, but like, it'd just be like the, the consistency would be nicer. But you kind of just have to like play by what works for you, right? So if you have that thing in you that's like driving you to make something, to build something, to find that success, you just got to kind of follow it. And that's what I did. And this isn't my first attempt at a business. I've tried so many times with things in the past. Like, I tried, uh, a marketplace for buying and selling <laughs> uh, reptiles. <laughs> I tried to open up a gaming center in my town with a friend. Um, we called it Level 1 Gaming. And that was like, you'd pay to come in, you can play all day, we'd have tournaments and so on. And those both failed horribly. I lost a ton of money on both. And it's just like, whenever you commit months of time like that, and you commit a ton of money like that, and it's all for nothing, everyone thinks you're crazy, right? So like you have to have it in you to be able to ignore what people are saying, tell them to shut up if you have to and keep pushing. And, and that's really hard. And I, and I feel like that's where it comes in where you either are entrepreneurial or you're not. Uh, and if you're not, I think it's really, really hard to push past all the negativity that is just associated with trying and failing and trying and failing 
which every entrepreneur does. So yeah, I, I did have a lot of support from my wife, the rest of my family and my friends. Not so much, mostly because I have kids and they want to see what's best for them. So for a while, there was like, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, you know, they're like, you're, you're risking the, the, your livelihood here. And then like Kitsu slash Hummingbird, you know, it started out as like an idea. I wanted it to be something that could be big, but I never thought it actually would be, right? It just started out as, as, as like scratching my own itch um, with a friend. And it's kind of grown bigger than I ever expected. And I'm grateful for that. And lastly, uh, advice for people wanting to create their own businesses. First, you got to have that itch, right? You got to have that thing in you and maybe you don't even know what it is, right? Maybe you're sitting at home and you're like, I could be a serial killer or, or something crazy. Like you don't know what that is inside of you that makes you so uncomfortable in your nine to five that makes it impossible for you to hold a normal job. A lot of time it's just, that's not for you, right? You can't function in a normal job. I can't function. I've had so many jobs like Walmart and I worked at Wendy's and I worked at Radio Shack and all these jobs and I failed. I failed at them. I was terrible at them. Uh, I mean, I, it just doesn't work for me. Uh, my brain's not structured that way. So uh, I think the first step is like making sure that's for you, right? Making sure you're not being like seduced by this like sexy idea of, you know, what you see on like the front page of TechCrunch or um, what you're reading on Reddit because business, like running a business fucking sucks. It's awful. <laughs> It's hell. Like, honestly, it's hell. But you just do it because it's just like, it's it's a part of who you are, right? It's almost like, I mean, people are going to give me shit for this, but it's almost like, you know, being gay, right? Where like, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't choose to be gay because everyone is like, I mean, I guess it's better now, but like for a while it just sucked, right? Like if you were gay, it's just like, fuck me, right? <laughs> but like, you can't change that. You can't just be like, okay, I'm, I guess I'm done for now. Uh, I'll come back to this in 10, 10 or 15 years, right? So it, like being an entrepreneur is the same where it's just like, you don't choose to, to pick how your brain works. You don't choose to pick how, what's going to make you like truly happy and eager to wake up the next morning. And you have to embrace all the bad that comes with that because it's worth it. And, and of course, you got to be consistent, right? You've got to want it more than you want to play video games all day. You've got to want it more than you want to go out with your friends and then sleep until noon, right? Like, like you, you've got to be willing to be uncomfortable uh, or you're never going to succeed because there's someone else out there who wants it more than you and maybe they're less talented, right? Maybe they're not as smart as you, but hard work is going to beat that out every single fucking time. Like I can't make that any more clear. Like you have to work hard. And if you've got that, that's all you need. You don't need to be talented. You don't need to be smart. I'm not either. Uh, <laughs> you know, so just like push, push, push and hustle. That's all you need. Coming from the man who was talking about sucking dick before we started recording. So, Oh my God, <laughs> yes. Yeah. It was you, that or you guys. Yeah, man. It just comes, comes full circle. Okay. But yeah. God damn it. For clarity, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> For clarity, I'm on this kick where I'm trying to reinvent myself, trying to be not terribly skinny, uh, get a little sexier when naked. So, you know, I'm on a diet. I got a personal trainer working out every day, but I've given up all junk food. And like I told the guys, it's like an addiction. Like I'm fiending for junk food. Like I want Pringles. I want Doritos. I want, you know, licorice. And I told them it's almost to the point where I'm going to be like sucking dick for Oreos in a week. <laughs> And maybe I will be. And, and you know what? If you judge me, that's fucked up. If you guys judge me for that, that's fucked up. We're supposed to be an open community, goddammit. I mean, as long, as long as you label it not for safe for work on the site, I don't think anybody's going to mind if you take pictures. Maybe it's my thing. Fine. I don't know. Maybe I'll really like it. Yeah. You know, how, how do you know if you haven't tried it yet? Maybe I won't even want the Oreos. I'll be like, you know what? Keep the Oreos. I'll, I'll see you next week. Same time. The dick is enough. It's wonderful. I, I'll it take the cream. Me. You keep the cookie. Yeah, but, but the cookie is the best part. <laughs> no, man. Double stuff that man. D double stuff it for me, please. All right. The next question uh, asked by Hakudamashi, and this one was the one that was picked by Dinah. Are you fine with fan service taking place within the main work, or would you rather all fan service be handled in side projects like video games, spinoffs, OVAs, and etc.? And to be clear before we answer this, fan service does not just equate to uh, sexy boobs and stuff. It's like anything that's like catering to uh, making something more popular using something that fans are interested in, like cameos or stuff like that. Like Doug said, this is not just sexy or you know, physique. It can also be something that just appeals to the audience, such as Sakuga or those kind of scenes in which you just add that bit of happiness to the viewer. But in terms of this question, I honestly am fine fan service within the main work. The only time when it's not appropriate is when it breaks the immersion that the scene holds. A recent show that sort of is guilty of this is Akami Ga Kill. While I didn't hate Akami Ga Kill, it did have those moments in which serious, tense moments were just broken up. The sexy girl kind of 
body tease or insert kind of comedy. It just kind of breaks the mood of the scene. You're just invested into the scene and when the scene just suddenly shifts to a comedic scene or a juxtaposition, then that just sort of ruins the scene for me. <laughs> You're all in April. <laughs> <laughs> And shows that have fan service such as No Game No Life or cooking shows like Food Wars, I feel it's much more appropriate and it just kind of belongs to the show because that's sort of the identity of the show. Now, I know some people who just doesn't like fan service at all and, you know, I'm fine with either one, but I can definitely understand why someone would definitely be deterred if a show those random kind of girl teases or off-putting to them. Wonderful, wonderful. And how about you, Nubo? Well, I'm kind of like with Dan on this. If long as I'm totally fine with fan service, as long as it doesn't take away from the content that anime series is trying to project towards me, or if it's like off putting, like a random panty shop and it's like showing a battle going on right in front of my eyes, that's the only time I don't like really fan service when it like takes me out of the moment when it shouldn't be. So, other than that, I really enjoy fan service for the most part. How about you, Father Josh? You know what? I fucking hate fan service. And here's why. God damn it. So, so it's like, okay, if I'm watching an episode, generally I'm there for, you know, one of a couple things, like whether it's story or it's comedy or whatever. And mm -hmm. to me, it's just, I just feel like you're manipulating me. Like, of course I'm going to enjoy if you're showing me titties, right? It's just like, it like makes up for like bad writing. It's like, okay, how, <laughs> like we don't know how to like, we can't make a Harry Potter kind of story. We can't make a Game of Thrones style story. Let's throw in some titties and call it a day. And it just drives me nuts. Like an easy way out. Yeah, because like, I'm, 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 a, I'm a dude and I am weak, you know? So I'm going <laughs> right. to, I'm going to. I'm going to bitch about it until it happens, and then I'm, like, transfixed. I'm, like, hypnotized. And then it's over, and I'm like, well, I got nothing out of that. What would you say about shows in which the edgy is the defining factor of the show? I feel like you're talking about those fighting or drama kind of shows. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, I get it, kind of. But it's, like, to me, it's, like, those shows where it's the point of the entire show is, like, the sexuality. It's just, like, a watered-down version of porn. Like, why? Like, why not just go for the full thing? That's like, it's like going to a strip club and being like, okay, just go to your underwear and I'm leaving. Like, give me everything, please. Uh, so I'd rather watch hentai than ecchi any day. Any day. Oh, Is there an ecchi that you actually prefer? No, none of it. I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I mean, what the fuck am I saying? I mean, <laughs> I, I'm sure if I watch any of it, I can enjoy it, right? Mm -hmm. Like High School of the Dead. Yeah, of course I can enjoy mm -hmm. it. And like Darling in, in the Franks. I mean, I love it. And I know that I love it just because I'm a pervert. <laughs> like it's not like this isn't like quality writing guys like like it's not groundbreaking shit <laughs> uh, I, I like it because i'm i'm a, a horny guy and I, I think i hate that about myself so thanks thanks anime mm -hmm. well biologically you can't really fault yourself yeah but i can fault no. everyone else it's dead oh, yeah. i can project faulty artist faulty artist right yeah come on guys try a little harder give me a real story that's what i want yeah, and uh, my two cents on it. Um, so most of the topic, because this is most of the topic of fan service, is in relation to um, sexual fan service. I don't really care about edgy shows. That obviously that's the point of the show. So your cup of tea, whatever. But you know, when you're watching like a drama or any type of show that's clearly not important, it, it's just trying to squeeze out just a little bit more. Uh, like a good example I can think of of a scene. I mean, th this anime is contentious to so many people anyway because it's so popular. But so season two of Sword Art Online, the very first arc of the show. There is a part towards the end of the first arc where uh, Shinon and Kirito are in a cave talking, trying to figure out who, like, the main bad guy is. This goes on for about two and a half episodes, and there's for almost the whole episode where when they're having this very serious, like, thoughtful conversation, the camera just keeps panning in on her ass and her thighs. It it's so just, like, we don't really care what we're writing about. Just look. Look. Look at the ass. <laughs> it's very important. Mm -hmm. And, and I hate that because it's – you don't need to really care what we're talking about as long as you are enjoyed our pretty visuals. I, I don't like fan service when it's pandering for the most part is basically what I'm trying to say. Uh, if it's basically there to be like, well, this will make people stay invested longer if they're bored by what we wrote. They'll at least be interested in what we put on screen. However, I do like fan service that is stuff like, uh, for example, in the very first episode of Dura, Walker and, um, oh, I can't remember her name, but they're like the manga anime light novel fans. They have a giant cardboard cutout of Holo from Spice and Wolf because the director <laughs> of that show helped direct Spice and Wolf, so it was a direct reference to his work. And there are multiple times throughout the Dura, if you see them like in Ikebukuro and see screens, you can actually see scenes from Bakano, because again, same creator. Isaac Amiria, even characters from Bakano, make a cameo appearance. I love that type of fan service because it's not actually doing anything to Dura as a show. It's just there to be small little fun stuff if you 
know the creator behind the work. Kind of like the money in Space Dandy is the same type of money they use in Cowboy Bebop because Wantanabe made both series. So that's just a fun little like fan service reference. Love referential type stuff. Hate, here's some boobs, here's some ass. I hope you enjoy it, even though it has nothing to do with the show we're watching right now. Can I tell you guys like my deep seated tinfoil hat theory? Yeah, sure. On the fan service in anime. So I, I believe in an irrational way that the reason there's so much fan service is because like the Japanese government is cracking down behind the scenes and they're like, we need more fucking babies. And they're just like, what can we do? Like, like, what can we do? Like, as a culture, what can we do? And then everyone's just like, why don't we just like slip it in? Like, subliminally, let's slip some titties in here. Let's slip uh, a nice thigh right here. And maybe it's, I guess it's not working. Like, <laughs> like maybe at this point they should shift gears. But I mean, okay. Before anyone like comes like with pitchforks at my door, I realize that holds no water at all. But I still believe it. So fuck you. Can, am I allowed to swear? <laughs> I've been swearing. Am I allowed to swear? Is that okay? Is this a rated R podcast? That's cool. I'm pretty sure me and Nuvo swear pretty pretty religiously on this. So yeah, really yeah. fucking heavy. You, you you're good. <laughs> well, if not, you can like <laughs> me out. That would be funny, but no. Yeah, I think Dinah's <laughs> the only one who doesn't curse really. Okay. Ironic, because I am the one who edits it too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I mean, I, I would agree with you. I, I think the culture probably some somehow related to the uh, the way that they structured the fans into shows, and for better or worse, it, it's not going away. Yeah. All right. The next question. This one was picked by Nuvo Noke, our boy, our ab monster. Uh, oh, here we go. From Gray Nani, they ask: Was it a specific person who got you into anime? If not, have you gotten other people into anime? Uh, Nuvo, you go first. Oh yes, I love you, Gray, for this. So. Actually, my cousin actually got me into anime, oddly enough. When I was, like, around, I want to say six or seven, he introduced me to, like, Fist of the North Star and Akira, which was graphic as fuck. But, luckily, it did spark my interest. And then I slowly converted to, like, DBZ, Sailor Moon, and the whole Tsunami block. <laughs> Been a cold-hearted killer since. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We still anime... Moe swag game out here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But thanks to my, uh, my thanks to my cousin, I love the medium and everything it has to offer. And that without anime, I probably would not know a whole lot of life lessons and embrace my positivity halo I have hanging over above my head. <laughs> How about you, Josh? Uh, yeah, I think I touched on this before, but for me, I started out with uh, I was introduced by a friend. When I was really young, I don't know how old exactly. I think like eight uh, or nine or, or, or maybe 10. Who knows? But it's weird because my son, my oldest son is eight. So I think about this and I'm like, oh, shit. But for me, I started out with Vampire Hunter D <laughs> and like simultaneously La Blue Girl, which is a hentai mm. for those of you that <laughs> uh, aren't in the know. Ray raised at an early age. Eight year old me and then like my eight year old son. And I'm like grossed out. <laughs> I'm like, please, please don't like have friends, uh, like like the friends I have. Um, but I have introduced others. I've introduced my wife uh, and my kids. They're all huge fans of My Hero Academia, uh, which we actually nice. just started watching again. Yeah, that's a that's shown in anime or well, most of them at least. They're for the majority perfect for uh, the family. Yeah. And uh, Dinah, what about you? About seven to eight years ago, one of my old high school friends. I was basically in a chat with him on Skype. I was doing my homework for college. He was kind of reacting to something and I couldn't tell, but he was like acting really hyped and all like pretty much not stressed, which is the exact opposite of me at that time because I had an exam next week and I was stressing the heck out. So I, was, I basically asked him, hey, what are you watching? He was like, oh, I'm watching, you know, uh, I think it was, was, I think it was Persona 4, the animation or something like that. He said like, this is really good. And I was like, oh that's an anime, isn't it? And he's like, yeah, you should really try it out. At that time, I was like, yeah, I don't know. And I was kind of skeptical. And so after a while, I was just like, ugh, I have like, I basically finished studying and I just wanted to like chill for like 20, 30 or not minutes or an hour. And he's like, just try out this one episode, this one show. And so he introduced me to a romance show, which was uh, Kaicho wa Maidsama. So I watched episode one of that show and I was like, okay, one, that female character is really attractive. And two, this show is actually really cute and really relaxing. So from that point on, I just started continuing the show. And after that show was finished, I wanted more. So that started actually what started me watching anime in general. And from that show, I moved on to Toradora and here I am, just pretty much watching seasonally now. Biggest Sundari fan there is. Yeah, started with Sundari, still a Sundari fan. <laughs> 
me, I, I guess Tom from Toonami would be the person I would think of who introduced me to anime. But no, um, <laughs> I, I, I would say uh, I discovered it just from being on TV. And I have introduced plenty of people to it. My sister, uh, for one, who's a user on the site, I got her in. Uh, first thing I showed her was uh, Yu Yu Hakusho. Nice. That's actually been my gateway anime for Multiple people. Uh, I did that to my friend Connor and his brother Devin as well. They're both in anime now because you Haka Show and Fullman Alchemist Brotherhood. I uh, I know how to pick them. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I feel like shonen shows, uh, like I said, for, are good for family. Are also great uh, starter shows because they encapsulate multiple genres. I agree. Yeah, but I, I've introduced plenty of people. But I've I kind of found it myself just because I was watching TV. You know, Dragon Ball Z. Sailor Moon, uh, Roni Kenshin. I, I watched them all. I was I was a Sailor Scout, a, a Z Warrior, and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, all, all the fun stuff. Preach it. Huh, and the last question, this is one I picked, is from at Trey. He asked, kind of an inverse to all the anime getting Hollywood adaptations. Are there any live action series or movies you think would make for a good anime? Any that would translate well into 2D? Yeah, that's kind of tough. I mean, I'm sure there's lots of uh, film franchises that would be nice to see in to anime. I'm going to shoot this to Nuvo first, and then I'll, I'll stew on my question for a second. I got you, Cap. I got you. Luckily, I had one in my brain like for a minute now. We have a lot of source material out there that I think could translate it to Hollywood, but for some reason, Hollywood like to fuck up things from my medium. But I got something easy for you guys. They could easily translate Shinken into the Hollywood spectrum. One is horror, and we know the horror Limelight for Hollywood isn't all that great for mainstream. But since the source material is very enclosed, it's very little room for them to fuck this up. That's when I'm looking at it. It's vampires. Who who doesn't who doesn't love vampires? You know. No, Nuvo. I'm gonna I, I, I'm gonna let you keep going with this, uh, but keep thinking as well because he actually wants to know the opposite. Uh, live action stuff from our end turned into anime. Ugh. Uh, but keep going with the shiki pitch. I want to hear it anyway. Yeah, okay. Uh, we going back with the shiki pitch. All right, yeah. So who doesn't love vampires? Who doesn't love psychological thinking? Who doesn't love, like, shiki is just awesome. I, I just think if they were to project it to the Hollywood masses, I think it would be a slam dunk. But, you know, that wasn't the question, apparently. I just went on. <laughs> no, I mean, e- either way, it was interesting. Uh, I thought of something, though, uh, while that was going on. So, uh that gave me some time to think. Uh, so I, I think it would be nice to see, uh, you know, a lot of these classic kung fu movies, like uh, a lot of the like Jet Li or uh, Bruce Lee or, uh, you know, movies like It Man brought into anime. Because, you know, they're so fun to watch, like, the classic kung fu films. But imagine if they, like, rotoscoped the animation and made, like, frame for frame, like, really cool, like, animated versions of, like, some of the most classic kung fu films ever. So these movies that are really dated with their cameras, you'd have, like, really nice, vibrant crisp fluid just like ridiculously nice looking animation with them i think that, those would be really cool to see be translated in the 2d that would be cool uh what about you dino mm, i feel unlike the opposite in which you know anime turned into live action i can't really find much anime to turn into that uh in terms of live action turning it to 2d anime i feel like because of how flexible the anime medium is it can support so much so many different genres and horror being one of them but i see drama and romance shows also translating very well. Because of the typical format of anime being 12 episodes to 24 episodes, you can really flesh out certain characters that would otherwise be quite shallow in a very short two-hour movie. Obviously, like you mentioned, Dokes, how old-school kind of like kung fu or fighting uh, movies, those can translate very well to anime as well. You know, utilizing Sakuga and all those crazy animation techniques, I think that would be amazing in uh, anime form. But yeah, I would say, and this is probably very general and very open, but it's like, it's just really hard because anime as a medium, because it's more defined, more like unique to like their own style and Western live action is just so broad. I feel like it's a lot easier to translate live action movies into 2D rather than, you know, the opposite, translating anime to live action. Yeah, I would agree. Was there a specific pick you had? Honestly, the one I have in my head would probably be like, I guess, I, forget, I, I Lord of the Rings was an amazing movie, but I would not mind seeing that in anime form. Personally, I don't know why, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it'll be fun to see a large-scale medieval type looking Lord of the Rings. Well, Lord of the Rings, too, is such an iconic series, too. It'd be cool to see it animated in anime form. Just no CGI, please. Oh, God. That's what I'd say. There's CGI and Lord of the Rings. Uh, Vigo Mortensen didn't like it, but... Uh... <laughs> okay, uh, Nuvo's still thinking, I bet. So how about you, Josh? What's uh, what's something you think would uh, translate over well? Um, I think the one thing I'd like to see more than anything else would be uh, 
uh, American gods. I just think that the the idea of like you know bringing you know ancient modern mythology to anime is a much more natural fit than trying to bring it to live action, just in terms of the scope of what you can actually do. So I actually think American Gods, amazing book, one of my favorites. The TV show is pretty good. Uh, that's on Stars. But if it were an anime, I think it would really bloom. Mm-hmm. What about you, Nuba Nuba Nuba? Okay, since I went off the left deep end with my first pitch, <laughs> that shit was crazy. Um, and, then, and then the fucked up part about it, Captain was letting me talk for like five minutes on this shit. I was like, I was all passionate. I was like, yeah, I'm getting it right now. I did not want to cut you off. Uh, I had to wait until there was a pause. We were PMing each other. We were like, this fucking guy, listen to him. <laughs> I, I heard both Dinah and Josh make a noise like, wait, that's not the right. And I was like, oh. <laughs> look, you could have tapped your microphone like two taps means like, yeah, man, you, you're on the left end, man. Turn back right. One movie, actually, I would love to see like an anime for him. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Have you guys seen like the Stephen King's It when they like animated that like little part when he was down in the sewer and he was trying to pull like Billy through the sewer? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. After I seen that shit, I was like, just convert the whole movie into like uh, 13 episodes. Like, oh my God. If I if I can get that in anime form, that would be so dope. Just the content alone with like Stephen King's It, I think it would probably be like so awesome. And it's so hard to make a great horror anime. Just, just imagine if it was like a collection of like Stephen King horror stories made into yes, an anime or something. That'd, that'd be, be dope. dope. That'd be so dope. And uh, d- before we move on to the actual topic of this podcast, because it wasn't supposed to be questions, we just kind of had a lot this time, so I wanted to dig into it. I also just wanted to call it, I, I would also like to see things that probably not as exciting as some people, but I, I would love to see things like Wizard of Oz and Singing in the Rain adapted in the anime mm. just to see oh, what yeah. they would look like Ooh, wizard of ours would be like so amazing that'd be nice just seeing like one of the most classic films of all time brought with like really fluid beautiful animation ah, it'd just be great mm-hmm. but that uh that ends question time we got through all of them thank you for all your questions all the ones that were not answered aside from the uh, josh related questions will be most likely answered in future episodes we won't be answering those your questions were bad we're not a fan of you guys <laughs> delete your account <laughs> <laughs> oh man you're all banned when, when josh says it he's always 100 percent serious all the time he's never joked always serious ask better questions next time you'll get picked <laughs> damn <laughs> truly it's a shame they live in such hard times when people can't <laughs> all jokes aside uh the main topic tonight is about animation i know that's surprising but we're actually talking about animation itself uh, we're going to be talking about traditional animation, CG animation, and maybe some other forms of animation that are also pertinent and worth talking about. Uh, this topic mostly comes to mind be- due to the uh, lovely CG bear from Golden Kamui that aired recently. It really sparked my interest in this topic. Mm-hmm. So uh, before we dig into it, I want to tell everybody, if they're not aware for whatever reason, uh, what traditional versus uh, CG, and I don't have it listed either, versus digital animation are. Uh, traditional animation is everything is drawn frame by frame, and then animated. It's as simple and as classic as you get. CG animation, uh, CG stands for computer graphics. Uh, These are made by computers, obviously, and they make these things that are meant to be cheaper, more efficient, and to animate stuff. And it's usually aimed specifically at making things like machines, like cars and planes, and other things that are really hard to draw frame by frame because of how complicated their designs are, easier to make into the shows. And a lot of people nowadays are not trained to draw things like animals and machines as well. So they're harder to draw for traditional artists who don't exist as much anymore, so... CG animation is used more frequently. And then there's also digital animation, which is just most of it is also done on the computer, but it is done to emulate traditional style. There's a lot less of the busy work of frame by frame on paper. Instead, you're doing that frame by frame on a computer instead. But yes, what are some good examples of uh, traditional anime that really shows why traditional anime is so loved by so many fans, guys, uh, other than like Cowboy Bebop? Well, I mean, this, there's this one show. It's, uh, I don't know if you guys have all seen it. It's kind of story wise, not so good, but animation wise, I, it's one of my favorites. It is called Chaka Ryorin Samurai, uh, Bride or something. It's an etchy show, but it's also done in an art style in which the lines are drawn in a paintbrush style, sort of like Street Fighter 4, if any of you ever played that. Oh, cool, cool. And it's just a beautifully animated show. I'm, it's just one of those shows in which you cannot replicate with CGI at all. And so that show is just so beautiful in its visuals. And another show in which traditional animation is just wonderful is one of the most iconic animated films is Redline. 
Redline oh, yeah, yeah. took seven years for uh, Madhouse to, I think it's Madhouse, for Madhouse to animate. And they basically drew every single frame one at a time. So if you were to pause that movie at any frame, it would make a perfect wallpaper. And it's just beautiful and aesthetically pleasing. Uh, quick fact check, you are right. Madhouse was the creator. Cool. Uh, how about you, Josh? What, what's an anime that just makes you think, this is why just traditionally drawn art anime just makes me come? What, which, what's the one? Yeah, I mean, for me, I think it's got to be Garden of Words. I didn't even like Garden of Words. <laughs> I found it super Damn. boring. Didn't enjoy it, but... <laughs> The animation was incredible. I watched the whole thing because of the animation. And I feel like that's the only reason they made it. They were just like, let me flex on all these other animators. (laughs) Don't worry about the story because it's bad. I mean, I, I, I'll, f- I'll fight you on that. I found the film very interesting and nuanced, but... Uh, you ain't the only one. Makoto Shinkai makes just eye-gasmic stuff. Yeah, the animation's incredible. I've never seen such beautiful rain. Yeah. Mm-mm. Nothing matches it. What about you, new? Well, I hate to uh, ride the den train, but since I go off an impact in fields, I have to go with Redline. When I watch Redline, I'm just looking like... God damn, this is why I'm an anime fan to the highest power. It's just like when you watch like something you can like really appreciate it. That's just the type of feeling I got when Red Light. Like, like every single scene, every moment the character will walk. It was just like amazing to me. So I have to go with Red Light. Got to double up on Red Light. Wait, real quick. Let me chime in because I feel like yeah. Studio Bones needs some love too. Oh, God, yeah. And Mob Psycho 100 are just incredible. So so smooth, everything. Like the fight scenes oh, yes. are, especially for like what One Punch Man is in particular, <laughs> like in terms of not being serious at all, they they do better action than I think a lot of the traditional shonen do. I, I would say, yeah, Bones is possibly the best animation studio right now in terms of making things look nice. Yeah, I'm with you there. It's either them or Madhouse. It's between those two. And then if you want, you know, nice background and pretty everything else, I would say it's between <laughs> um, PA Works, Kyoto Animation, and uh, Makoto Shinkai. Uh, if I were going to go for an anime that uh, the traditional art is something that I remember vividly just impressing me in certain scenes, Gurren Lagann. Mm-hmm. I mentioned it a lot on here, but there are a few scenes. Middle of the series, there's this fight between... Uh, Simo and the main character and this uh, major antagonist, his name is Lord Genome. And you know how everybody was like busting a nut over the uh, Deku Todoroki fight from season two of uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, My Hero Academia? I think uh-huh. this fight in Gurren Lagann is even more exciting animation wise. I just, I love punch for punch just how exciting that fight is. And I would say Boxing Anime is another good example of just how fucking awesome it looks when you see just people beating the shit out of each other. That's true. And traditional based art. You know what else was great? I can't even remember the name. But it's the one with, like, the girl with, like, the white hair. <laughs> Come on, guys. You know it. The white-haired girl. Uh, uh, and, and it's, like, the guy who's, like, the human sword. He's, like, a human sword. Oh, oh, so, oh so, uh, something. Oh, no. I know exactly. It start with a K. Don't it? It start with a K. Is it Soul Eater? Not Soul Eater. No, no, no. That, like, his body is, like, a, a weapon. Like, she, she d- right? Whoa. You can't tell people that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, fuck it. I mean, if, if they didn't see the series by now, I mean, I'm sorry. But you know what? That, that That's the series you're talking about, right? Yeah, it's like a Kata... Is it Kata Nagatari? I, I ain't gonna say the Japanese name. Hey, creator, I'm not saying the Japanese uh, name. Uh, oh, uh, are you talking about uh, K- K- Katana Gatari? Maybe I am. Same thing. Same actually, thing. Actually, you know what? When you say it like that, it makes so much more sense as a name. <laughs> Yeah, are, are are you talking about the series with the Hang guy on. who's going to beat like the twelve swords? Yeah, people? yes, yeah, that's right. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. K- katana Guitar. That's it's because it's a katana story. That's, that's right. Why call that makes that. so much more sense. Uh, yeah, that one I really love the art on that and the story too. But like, yeah, it's it's visually very pleasing. Yes. And we won't confirm or deny if what Nuvo said was uh, an actual spoiler for that show or another show. Yeah, I've never seen it, but I oh, uh, I, will, so I will purge then. that from my mind. <laughs> I'm so sorry, then. I thought you watched it, then. Nuvo, ne- never assume everybody's seen stuff. <laughs> Nuvo just comes right out with his spoilers. He's like, oh, is that the one where she gets pregnant and doesn't keep it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, but it was just the, I, I just remember because it, it was so impactful. I was so pissed. Dinah, for, for for me, when this goes live, can you bleep that when he says that? <laughs> oh, I will bleep it to the fullest of my abilities. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, oh my god. But before Nivo spoil something else, let's move on to CG in a moment. Or what did, <laughs> was there what, what was was something else you wanted to say, Dinah? 
Uh, very quick shout out to Violet Evergarden from last season. Oh yeah, anything oh, yeah. Annie is beautiful. That was great. W- what's a good example of CG, guys? Because there's not a lot. Berserk 2016, hands down, oh, easy, gosh. easy peasy. Oh yeah, totally, totally, man. Oh, Golden Conway, man, the one that inspired this podcast. <laughs> Mm, oh yeah yeah that bear it, it just makes me wet i don't even have a vagina um real talk though i really enjoyed inu yashiki or uh, maybe, maybe yeah. i'm pronouncing it wrong the one with the old dude you know what i'm talking about yeah i think you pronounce it right Th- that's how i say it too but I-, I think the cg there is really good mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like it's wrong you know what i mean yeah a lot of times i would say cg that has to do with uh non-organic things like robots because inu yashiki they're basically cyborg type people it fits right right i think there was a show recently that really defined cg anime and really just set the bar for it and that was the i think it was two seasons ago it's land of the lustrous oh yeah yeah that was that show is hands down probably the best cg anime series to have come out in recent years and probably the the cg anime that many future animes should probably look up to Uh, i didn't mind the cg in the fate series actually i know a lot of people didn't like it but I actually thought it was pretty okay. Yeah, I still like even though I guess it's jarring in that just because how good everything else looks. But I still think <laughs> right. like in terms of in terms of CG, it still looks pretty good. Yeah, CG skellies though. CG um, skellies. Now, something I like to always talk about that look I think looks good for CG is uh, examples of this are the Beast Spear in Ushio and Tora and the volleyball and basketball in both Haikyuu and Kuroko no Basuke. There are times where they'll make it CG to make it more dynamic in movement, and it always looks really fucking cool when they do it. I never noticed that they use CG in Kuroko no Basuke. The, occasionally, when the ball is like, flying through the air like really fast, it'll be CG, but because it's moving so fast... You, you, you can barely tell. One example of CG that I love, though, is the opening of the second opening of Baby Steps when they're playing tennis. It looks so goddamn fluid. It looks fucking cool. Beach. Yeah, those, but uh, usually for me, it's small things that are even hard to notice. They're CG unless you just happen to watch the show a lot and see it. Because that's what the point is. It's supposed to blend in. Uh, when it sticks out so much that it makes you go, oh, Jesus Christ, stop, please. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a challenge, right? Uh, it was just like, if, for example, there's like Final Fantasy Advent Children, right? <clears throat> Where it's like uh, yeah. all CG. Yeah. And that's fine it because great. it all fits with each other. You know, I just feel like it's like who framed Roger Rabbit syndrome, right? Where like if the difference is too jarring, it's just like... Was that on purpose? Are you guys like, do you need money? Can I send you $20 to make this right? <laughs> yeah, it, it's just, it's noticeable if uh, the two don't, you know, it's, I don't know, there, there needs to be a blend to make it work properly. So TLDR Preserve 2016? <laughs> yeah. Well, and it sucks too, because there are a few occasional scenes that are traditionally animated and they look good. And and, and then you, you see the rest of the show and you're like, oh my gosh, they just move. Like the Terminator from the original Terminator movie. Wait, what's that one where it's like the dude, he's like in a cyber cafe. He's like managing it, but he's definitely not managing it. It's just his like, <laughs> that's what he puts on his business card. He's just playing games all day. Oh, the Chinese one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The animation in that and the CG in that was fucking terrible. Uh, but I feel like no one talked about it. Like I was like offended by it. Like it, like, it affected me as a person. And I went online to find <laughs> other people who would feed my feelings of anger. And no one was saying anything <laughs> bad. And it really upset me. And I think it's called Quan Chikau or something like that it was posted on youtube by the chinese company itself oh really oh the king's avatar that's what it was called yeah king's oh avatar. yeah 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 because you watched that didn't you Dino? or did you not i did yes yeah i remember you talking about it because you enjoyed it right i did enjoy it it's it was yeah it was fun i enjoyed it too i just hated the fucking animation <laughs> something i always think of like you know like because most of us watched uh, suki akira right yes that well i don't know what dropped it early on but like the normal characters like the mo- important ones they were really nicely with the soft drawn style but they put so much effort into that. Majority of the background characters were like that really, really, really bad CG. <laughs> mm, didn't Parasite do the same thing? Yeah, it did. And you, you tend to forgive it in these shows because it's like, well, that they don't really fucking matter because the show is so good. Yeah. True, true. Like the plot makes up for it. Yeah, as long as the CG is, you know, not the main characters. Uh, oh, because Parasite's a good example. They use CG for the Parasite for parts of it, and it looks great. True, yeah. Uh, the Blades are totally CG, and they look amazing. Oh, huh, I didn't even notice. So why is CG so hard to do? Uh, I, I is something else I put down for us. I think most of us would agree, right? It's just it doesn't blend well right now because they just haven't gotten there. Yeah, I mean, I, my feeling is that it's like a budget thing, right? Where you're already like, I think budgets are just tight in anime in general. So it's like you're already paying so much for these very senior, very talented animators, uh, traditional animators. So then it's like, okay, we've got fifty dollars left to hire a three D animator. What do we do? And I think that's where the challenge is, is they can't bring in these senior animators like Pixar has, who are demanding like $200,000 salaries. 
So they're working with what they have and they're still learning the, the technology, interns or juniors or, or something. So I think it will get better with time. I, I think another thing that is an issue is time. Uh, they're on a time crunch constantly and it's hard to draw right. really, really well consistently when you don't have time. Mm-hmm. Especially if it's a really complicated thing that you're drawing and if you mess up and have to redraw it, well, I mean, that's just a fucking I headache. It, I mean, I don't know. Isn't it easier, though, like on the computer? It's supposedly CG's used to simplify the animation process, definitely. I just feel like, like when I'm dra- trying to draw something on paper, I would give anything for like, for like a Command-Z, like just to undo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like it's way easier on the computer than it is on paper where you have to like erase. I think it really depends on the artist because some people like, you know, you look at people like Ichiro Oda who does one piece. He refuses to use digital stuff because he does everything by hand and because he can do it really fast and really well. Yeah, but I mean, at the same way, like my dad like refuses to use a computer, but that's just because he's old. Like, I don't think it's because it's like that's that's the <laughs> ultimate like way. I think it's just more this is what I'm comfortable with and I don't want to change. But I still feel like if we look 20 years, we're going to see people moving at a pace that far exceeds what he can do just because of what technology enables. I feel like CG simplifies things in that you can have two different points in a scene and you can kind of have the computer auto-generate the movement of those two points. Unlike if you were to draw it, hand draw it, you have to draw every single bit of movement in the middle of it. And I just, like you guys said, CG just simplifies it and just, it saves time, like Josh said. Well, because you know something like, okay, so, and I'm not picking on it this time for once. Your name? You know how the movie... It's the majority. It's really, 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 really beautiful digital animation for almost all of it. Mm-hmm. There's one scene in the movie that is mostly traditionally drawn, and it's one of my favorites to watch because I just love the way it looks. It's that part where, like, towards like the second half of the film, where like the main character guy, he like pretty much like sees like basically the time string of like what's happening, the past and future and stuff. It's hard to explain without spoiling. He sees a lot of stuff at once, and there's, like, a lot of beautiful watercolors used. Right. That's clearly all hand-drawn, and that's something that, like, I don't think you can ever really recreate digitally. Uh, digitally has its own strengths, especially for, like, lighting and stuff. Um, but I think CG animation, just until they really... I think Land Illustrious is the great place of, like, we need to start here and get better from here. I just, I don't know. I, I wish CG... Uh, I, I want him to spend a few more years on it, <laughs> but I guess you have to practice to get good. Practice makes perfect, so Golden Kamui, go. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. I think technology is a, is a limitation too, right? I mean, just look yeah. at like five years ago. Like if you look at the CG used in video games, which is a good place to set the bar, I think. Particle effects you'd see when someone was firing a gun or seeing grass moving and hair moving, things like that. Those things were not very good, right? Where it would just be like there would be very little happening there because of limitations yeah, with technology. But like... Now, if you look at games currently, we have individual blades of grass like being animated in like the millions and, and things like that where like it wouldn't even be possible for uh, someone to do that by hand. And I think that's what's going to open it up to like incredible things. Like we mentioned like colors mixing, like we can mix colors exactly like it would in nature and we could do it with AI, right? So I, I think there's a lot of potential as technology moves forward and becomes more affordable. But it's not there. And and I think Japanese are just very old-fashioned in general. Just in in terms of doing business with them personally, they tend to just be more old-fashioned in the way they do things, which I can respect. But I do think that as technology progresses, we're going to see better animation and more impressive things without realizing that it's CG, right? Where it's going to blend perfectly with what we've come to know as anime. I wonder if there's going to be studios that transition over to 3D anime exclusively, such as how like Disney used to do when they just hand-draw everything back then. And now they're suddenly all just 3D. Right. Probably. I, I could see that. I mean, I, I do I do think, uh, I mean, because Disney did do a traditional anime a few, or anime, <laughs> animation a few years ago with Princess and the Frog, and it was very reminiscent of the early ones. But yeah, now they produce predominantly, but uh, you stick with CG since, uh, I mean, it's just, it's what they like using now stylistically. It's the, the era of CG for them and Pixar. Right. We really don't have American cartoons, that, or I mean, American animation. <sighs> just use cartoons, guys. How many people are going to freak out when I, I said that? People are going to fucking go yeah. nuts. They're gonna be like, I gotta bleep that it motherfucker. Out, man. <laughs> I gotta bleep it out. <laughs> like, the word. That motherfucker. <laughs> it is interesting though, because cartoons, the like TV show wise, they don't. None of them use CG, but all the biggest movies, they're almost exclusively CG. Right. It's weird, right? Because like you look at a, uh, you know, something like Coco, which was just absolutely beautiful. It's, you know, that's all CG animation. Yeah, like Adventure Time, like SpongeBob and shit. They're not using any CG, are they? No, no, not at all. Not unless they're using it for a joke or something. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's true. Like they'll make something specifically stand out by making it CGI. Right, right. But uh, I think right now anime is getting close to that point where CG in the US was at in like the late 80s and early 90s and some stuff like Toy Story was. If you look at the first Toy Story, it's not that pretty anymore because, you know, right. we've seen how far it's come. Uh, I think anime is on the fritz of getting to at least that point. So I think it's finally getting in the step of it's going to be nice to look at here in a few years probably on CG. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. Like where it is right now, I don't think is appealing at all. Sometimes like, like there, there are a few rare cases where it's like nice, but I think most of the time. I don't enjoy it whenever I see the CG. Yeah, same here. Same here. Uh, Nuvo, you've been pretty quiet. How do you feel about CG? I want to hear your thoughts, man. Yeah, I was throwing off that knowledge. I was soaking it in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shit, you want me to stop the thought bubble? Hell to the now. Oh, uh, yeah, man. I oh, yeah, got power pockets in the in the stomach right there. Um, I really don't have too much to comment. I just want to know, once the CGI is implemented into the series... And obviously, who is green lighting this shit? That, I mean, come on, man. Like, the the, <laughs> the series that inspired this whole topic, it's like, when they see the final product or when they see the screening, before this come out, I know somebody in that room seeing this fucking bear <laughs> come out this... I know somebody seen this bear and was like, nah, man, we can't do this shit. I mean, who is green lighting this? That's, the, that's all I want to know. Everybody's seen that bear before the whole world seen it. Come on, man. I feel like it's like they know it looks bad, but like they're like project manager or project managers are on their ass and they're like, we want to see our families again. We've been locked in this room for the last a year. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, it's good enough. Like the story is good. Our animation's good. It's just, it's just miss me with the CG shit. But I understand from that aspect, like the time, you know, frame and, you know, pressure. I understand all that. It's just like I never seen a series where we see the CGI icebergs. And that series actually good, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the only series that I can say, like, the CGI is, like, kind of so-so, but the story carry weights and make you, like, want to watch the series, even though the CGI is kind of out there, is, like, nice of Sendodia. Other than that, I, I don't really see a series that, like, you watching it, damn, this story is so good, I can just say... Fuck the CGI. Hmm. Funny that you brought up Night of Sidonia. I feel like the studio behind it, I think it's Project Satellite. Their series, Night of Sidonia, Ajin, they have some pretty nice and hooking stories. There are some people out there who just find the CGI animation very bothersome. And I'm just curious on what, like, well, you've expressed that you like Night of Sidonia, Nuvo, but I'm curious on what Dokes and uh, Josh think about those kind of series. Uh, I think for me personally... I haven't seen them. It's harder for me to get into. One of the big reasons I love anime is, well, animation, of course. Uh, so I like the art style and what I'm looking at to be something I find pleasing. Uh, I'm not right dismissing CGI as being a bad practice. I think it's great for cost effect and uh, nice for different styles and stuff. But it, it would make it harder for me to get into if I don't like the CGI because uh, it is something I personally find like not that appealing to the eye. But if someone told me this is a show that would make me fucking like... Uh, just give me the chills like I mean I would be willing to stick it out I've played things that look like ass before just because I've heard the game is good and that's been true I can watch an anime that I think looks kind of dinky just to see the story if you have or have not seen Shirobako there is a whole like small three to four episode arc all about traditional versus CGI animation I think it's one of the best ways that covers a topic about why like both parts of the coin need to respect each other because they both are important to helping the overall aspect of animation in general uh, but for me the reason I haven't watched those shows is because I, I don't like the way they look personally and uh, it's hard for me to invest my time in animation that I am not personally attracted to yeah I mean I'm kind of with you there so it's like I can get through something that has like janky animation depending on how bad it is right but but the aesthetics are super important to me so for like the king's avatar there are scenes in that where it looks like these characters are like rigged up on popsicle sticks and they're just like bouncing them by the screen it's like <laughs> it's like is this serious are you guys for real but then like on the flip side I have a harder time where I don't agree with the art style as a whole um, so like Shiki comes to mind where I know Shiki's really good everyone tells me it's incredible mm -hmm. And I try to watch the first episode, but they, they look like par praying mantises. Like, it freaks me the fuck out. And I just can't watch it. <laughs> like, get out of here with those big-ass eyes. I can't do it. I can't. See, now, the eyes don't bother me. It's the goofy-ass hair of everybody in the show. I love Shiki, but the hair is so goddamn anime. <laughs> right. It's like, this is too anime for me to watch this anime. Well, because, like, the show is so... it ha It's got some of the best horror music and themes and writing I've seen in anime in general. And it's fantastic. But there are a few times where I've been, I was like... 
being like, this is genuine and creepy. It would be even creepier if he didn't look like he had fucking cat ears right now. Right. right. Yeah, so I will watch it eventually, but I have a really hard time with just the whole aesthetic of the series. You see a silhouette of a person, but you see like also a silhouette of like a clown hair. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of characters in the show that have dumb hair, unfortunately. Uh, that's like, that, that's, a, that's a weird thing. Shiki, it's a great show, just the hair's dumb. <laughs> it's a great show, though. Definitely recommend it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, if you, Halloween time, it's, it's, watch it with the kids. No, don't watch it with the kids. It's really fucking brutal. <laughs> Josh, show it to your kids. <laughs> but Nubo's over there like, I just recommended that shit to be live action. I just talked highly on that. And Josh comes in here talking shit. <laughs> I mean, I mean, look, he read my mind. I'm like, man, hey, if he wasn't the creator right now, I'm dropping <laughs> fucking bombs. I'm dropping bombs right now. But I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, shit. Look, look, I, I'm like, I'm chill, chill, chill. He the creator. Don't say nothing bad. Don't say nothing bad. Stay in your corner. <laughs> yeah, I hear you over there just shifting in your seat. You're like, mm-mm, mm-mm. He wanted to come onto the podcast just to fight me because I, 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 uh, he, he's like, we're getting rid of this thing on the site. And I was like, okay, I'm going to be a jerk and make a post about how I don't agree. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's it. I'm going to throw some verbal hands. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I got my edit feature, though, so I'm happy. <laughs> You're like... <laughs> you just edit everything I say so that I lose every argument I, I start. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm complacent now. I can be bribed. <laughs> yeah, very easily. Um, speaking of fighting, awkward transition to uh, Megalobox, which is a currently airing anime about boxing. And it's oh, yeah. actually a tribute to the old show, Ashida Joe. Ashida no Joe, yes. like that? Uh, yeah, Ashida no Joe yes. or Tomorrow Joe. The animation style is actually very retro. It's like kind of blurry. It seems to mimic the old school style of animation. And I wonder if you guys have ever seen a show like that and what do you guys think about it? It's weird seeing it uh, in the modern like era because you know everything nowadays because it's clearly not digital animated it's all traditional and it's emulating shows between like you know 95 and like 2003 or 4 specifically like it looks like it's from like the bebop trigon era it looks like it's from a dvd yeah well and but like it looks nice when it wants to but it definitely like it uses a lot of browns and looks it's trying to look older and a little bit grainier on purpose which is interesting i respect it i like the artistic choice there i i like that they're sticking to their guns and trying to make something that's uh, supposed to be a homage to one of the most classic and oldest uh and important series to ever exist because mm-hmm. uh if you're having a 50th anniversary tribute to uh the most famous sports or well specifically boxing series ever i don't think you would want it to look starchly different because then you would feel like well this it's nice they're making a tribute but it also doesn't feel like it fits the show that it's trying to tribute towards uh so i i absolutely love the fact that they're uh going old school with it it makes me uh it's kind of like that's why i still love watching uh stuff like i loved seeing the film for mary and the witch's flower there's still a sunio uh, ponach uh which i did discover it is pronounced ponach the directors themselves actually said it's a croatian word that they got that from it so it's ponach if you're curious how to say it they're emulating the old style of ghibli and ghibli has always been for the most part, traditionally drawn. So it's nice seeing things like emulating the old style. So there are still people who are inspired by old artists and old series and want to keep it alive and not just, you know, follow the trend. That's what's popular. I need to have bigger moe eyes, more idol suits. And obviously, if we want to make Josh watch, we need more boobs. <laughs> That's how you keep me there. Actually, I didn't even know th- about this until just now. I definitely recommend it. I think you would really enjoy it. Yeah, I decided my plan to watch. So I'm definitely going to check it's, that it's out. It's interesting. I, I like one of the, the reactions from Ocelot. He just said, Hajimi no Bebop. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is pretty apt after watching the trailer. Uh, the style is very similar. It's very hype. The main character looks a lot like uh, Mugen from Samurai Champloo, I would say. It looks like he could be his brother or something. Yeah, he's like brown Mugen. Yeah, he's like Mugen without the facial hair and the slummy clothes. <laughs> right. But yeah, yeah. The, I, I, I don't know. Personally, I'm really, really in favor of seeing some stuff uh, emulate old styles. That stuff always makes me happy. But what about you? How do you feel about it? Did you pose the question? I really like it. Honestly, I do like it more if the lines were more solid because like, at first when I saw it I was like this is quite blurry but I can definitely respect the fact that you're like like you said it's paying homage to one of the most iconic uh, fighting series to ever come out in anime and I definitely respect it and it has good animation when it needs to it's really good and I'm not going to let that bother my enjoyment of the show right on right on what about you Nuvo Have you, did you did, did you start it up you know I did because I'm a huge Samara <laughs> yeah, Joe you're... fan <laughs> you know you're a Joe and Epo fan so this is right up your alley 
Oh, yes. When this said 50th anniversary of Tamar Joe, I was like, fucking sign me up. <laughs> First episode, I was into it, man. I just like, one, it's throwing me back into the time of when I fell in love with anime because, you know, I'm a 90s kid and stuff like that. So it reminded me of a lot of series from that time period. Also, it's just fucking awesome to see a boxing anime back. It's so hard out here to make good boxing anime. And then it's paying homage to one of the iconic ones there is in Tomorrow Joe. And it's doing it so well so far. So far, it's doing it so good. How, how did you feel about uh Because did, did you see episode two yet? Yes, I did. That he's that he's gonna go by Joe. Uh, did that just make you so happy? I literally was like, "Fuck yes!" And then the way they did it was so neat. I was like, at first, I was like, I was like, they probably going to not say Joe. They probably going to be like make his name to like tomorrow or something like that. But then he was like. Let's go with Joe. I was like, fuck yeah. I was like, yes. I, I just like everything about it because it reminded me of Tamara Joe. Even his threat, the guy that he trying to fight towards and to fight into his boxing ring, even he reminded me of the character from the O series. I, I mean, just the way they doing it is so smart. The way they, I can't say too much because I don't think. Yeah, you're, you're already spoiled. You already spoiled one show. So no, no, no more. Yeah, yeah. And Tamara Joe is one of those series. If you don't know what happened, I don't want to tell you. But I'm so excited to see how they're going to either they going to pay homage because right now it's identical they like changing a couple of things but they, they paying homage just like his own thing but just nodding like yeah this is that 50th anniversary uh, that's all we need to do to get new to talk was talking about some boxing and i mean dino you, you brought it up there you go He's making me excited to see it now. Like, I feel like I got to watch it tonight. I'd recommend it. Go for it. Yeah. yeah it's taking about 40 minutes. It won't take you too long. So before we uh, finish off the main topic, were there any other animation styles specifically in anime that you were wanting to call out, talk about, or were interested in discussing? Because, uh, like, I mean, I bring it up a lot because it's one of my fan- favorite types of animation. Uh, rotoscoping animation, which is in uh, things like Funimo Amu and Kids on the Slope, where they uh, actually mimic and draw frame by frame people's real movements so that people look more fluid and real. I fucking love. I wish there was more rotoscoping animation for sure. Akunohana. Oh, yeah, that's true. That, that, that's a great example of that, too. I only watched the pilot, but I, I loved uh, what I saw. Isn't it Ping Pong rotoscoped as well? I haven't watched that yet. Uh, No, Ping Pong is just Yuasa. It's, he's just crazy. <laughs> oh, just really? Yuasa. <laughs> Yeah, he 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 does. Like, if you want to have the most exaggerated and crazy, colorful, traditional art ever, he's the guy. He just, I don't know, it's hard to explain his art. Like, it's definitely all traditional, but it's, like, fucking bonkers, and I love it. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. I mean, it's on my list forever, and I always see people talking about, like, what, like, how unique it is. I was just under the impression that it was Rotoscope. Yeah, have you uh, watched Kaiba, the Tatami Galaxy, or anything he's made before? Yeah, yeah, Tatami Galaxy I checked out. Okay, so same guy made both of those. So like, it, gotcha. I mean, you know how crazy yeah, it is yeah. with the characters. Like, same kind of stuff. You're gonna it's get like, am I even sober right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's <laughs> it's crazy sometimes. Uh, it makes ping pong more exciting than I've ever seen in animation, though. It's fantastic. Something anime doesn't do, but I would love to see. Uh, very few films use it. Stop motion would be cool. No one's gonna do that, but stop motion animation, I love. Uh, yeah. Stuff like uh, what was it, like the the box trolls or whatever. I think used it uh, and some other stuff too. Like yeah, hit me with that Rudolph classic. <laughs> oh god yeah classic. yeah and claymation too mm, yeah i'll take that oh, any day claymation i'll take some claymation anime all day told, give, give me a 12 episode claymation series i'll watch it all day is there any claymation like japanese claymation um possibly uh i mean you I think there is right i just don't know there might any. be some shorts at least but i don't know about full series though bet you if i ask uh alice she'd tell me find it she out she always knows every short Kids out there people we need to know yeah yeah you comment like every single one that exists and then we we will tell you we'll watch it and then we'll, we'll see if we actually do <laughs> right replace the cj bear in golden comedy with a clay bear oh my god that'd be kind of work hilarious that'd be kind of <laughs> cool that might work if he would have came up like a clay bear i'm gonna be like man that shit hard right there it, 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 it might have worked be like the big fucking yeti and, and rudolph and just be like Rrr. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having like comedy anime where like one character is claymation and they never address why. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah, you got shit like Cromartie. It could have passed that because like Cromartie High School, like everybody looks like they're almost paper cut out half the time when they do stuff. It's hilarious. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Before we end up moving to the end of this, is there anything animation-wise specifically that you guys wanted to talk about? Uh, one ultimate question is, which studio creates your favorite animation style? Kyoto, Madhouse, PA, Bones, Satellite? Uh... I'm not going to be partial to just movie style because I really do love people like like I absolutely love 
uh, everything from the Ghibli artists, from like you know Miyazaki and uh, rest in peace, Isao Takahata who recently passed away, and uh, Yuna Bayashi who is carrying on the style. And then I, I also really loved uh, when he was alive. Satoshi Kon's art was really beautiful, very realistic. Uh, and then uh, you know Mamoru Hosoda, I love uh, his like I love a lot of artist styles specifically instead of like you know company styles. I love seeing specific artists that I know that I'm like oh I love seeing this. I haven't seen this guy draw something in a while. But if I had to pick one animation studio that consistently right now is always nice uh josh named him earlier bones i think right now is the top dog in animation right now yeah i mean i'm right there with you i think my favorite would be bones i do really like the stuff that production id puts out yeah yeah very good stuff oh, too. yeah it isn't like mind-blowing but i think it's just consistently like of high quality how about you Nuvo? madhouse baby that's fair. That's hard to argue against, too. Yeah, I have to go with Madhouse as well. I'm surprised. I thought, oh, I guess I do make No Game, No, game, no Life and stuff for you. I thought you were going to go for Kyoto Annie or something. I do really like, I think Kyoto Annie has some really solid animation. And same if PA works, uh, I really like yeah. their solid, like, just solid lines. This is one thing I like about animation that they do is that the lines are really solid. I'm not the biggest fan of the shows in which the lines in between are just not that visible, I guess. That's fair, that's fair. Uh, yeah, that's what I'll stick with for now. All right, well, then we shall move on to current anime talks name withholding until diana tells me to get a better one so uh this week lately what's everybody been watching uh josh you're the guest this that's definitely a word uh you tell us first what you've been watching <laughs> honestly i haven't had time to watch a whole lot lately uh the only thing i've been consistently watching is darling in the frog and i did start mm-hmm. violet yes. evergarden uh, and i'm really enjoying both of those i'm currently watching well megalo box megalo box uh, is one of the ones i'm watching Oh, I just finished finally, uh, after a long, long time, uh, season two of Kekai Sensen, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, that was nice. on par with the first season. Oh, you re- you really think so? I think so, yeah, because I thought the first season was really great at focusing on uh, Leonardo, and then season two did a great job mm-hmm. focusing on everybody else. The finale was good, but I mean, it's kind of hard to match a like a one hour plus finale that the first season did. Gosh, I feel like I was watching something. Oh, I started that one seasonal anime about the baseball, like salary with the making the money, like you, you, how much money you make is based on how well you perform. It's got a lot of really shitty CG, actually. So it makes the baseball games look kind of like ass. And it uh, is really boring so far. So far, after one episode, I don't recommend it. I'm going to give it a few more episodes. And if I don't like it, uh, even as a baseball loving motherfucker, I might drop it. Hmm. I wish I knew the series you were talking about. Hmm. We'll link it in the description below. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll go find the name of it when one of you guys is talking in a moment. Uh, other than that, I watched like one or two episodes of my very, very slow burn Polar Bear Cafe again. So I think I've watched 27 episodes over the last like four years. So I'm getting there slowly. You and your watch one episode and stall it out for five years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what's up with that show. I love it. It's hilarious. It's one of the funniest anime I've seen. But I uh, I, I take it in slowly. Just like Josh does his uh, his junk food now. <laughs> what have you been watching, Nuvo? That you, you probably have enough to list so I can go look up the name of that baseball show. Magolia Box, you know, 50th anniversary. It's amazing. It might just take the crown. Oddly enough, I don't know. Maybe because I'm a Tomorrow Joe fan and the hype is real at this moment in time. Who knows? But we got an action packed series. It's so great so far. I'm also watching, of course, My Hero Academia season three. Starting off really good. I did hear the first episode was basically a recap though, right? It, it was, but since I like, I know like the source material because my little brother actually tells me what's about to go on. Don't worry. Shit is going down this in this season. I'm also watching Steins Gate Zero, which is... Heck yeah. Man. How was it? That, that first episode was good. good. I'm watching this shit like, damn. I like the way, I wish I, wish I would have uh, really... Uh, rewatch the first Nine Gate because they was throwing so much stuff at me from the old series. I'm like, whoa. But still. A quick pointer is before anyone watches Steins Gate Zero, please watch episode 23 beta that is on YouTube. Uh, you have to watch that before you watch Steins Gate Zero. It's sort of the linking episode that links the original series to the current Steins Gate Zero. Is, is that just episode 23 in the standard series then? It's basically episode 23 except the last half is completely changed. Uh, you can actually find it by typing in Steins Gate 23 beta onto YouTube and you'll you can watch like a 10 minute like alternate ending of episode 23. Wait, so is Steins Gate Zero the same characters as uh, the original? Yes, it is. Uh, Steins Gate Zero takes place in the other timeline and I don't want to spoil the original Steins Gate, but it basically takes place if Okabe from the original Steins Gate didn't choose, didn't move forward with his plan to yeah there's a there's something that happens to somebody in the very first episode and we don't really discover the link to that until far later into the series and gotcha. if he 
isn't able to do that and fix those things, then this is like that timeline. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I gotta I gotta watch that. What's up with uh Mayuri having like G cups all of a sudden though? That's that's surprising. Like her boobs seem like three times bigger. It's been eight years. What's the, I mean, yeah, but I was like, damn, what's <laughs> going on here? It's <laughs> like, hey, we gotta get, we gotta sell these DVDs. Oh, Dinah, you have to find that link for me, Dinah, because I haven't seen it yet. Unless I watch it first, then I'll link it in the bottom uh, as well. Yeah, we will link it in the description below. Mm-hmm. And I'll send it to you guys later. It's 1980. It's a, a must-watch. I'm also watching Afterlife and Cooking. It's so good. I wasn't even gonna pick up this series, but I'm kind of glad I, I am. It's it's really good. It's really good. I'm also watching Tokyo Ghoul Re. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, I had to watch it now. It's good. I'm I'm glad that I'm I'm glad to have it back. I'm glad to have it back. I'm a Tokyo Ghoul fan. A lot of people didn't like season two. I like season two, so fuck off. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I'm just really glad to have Tokyo Ghoul. Just experience the characters again. I wish I, they would have kept the same theme song. But other than that, I'm enjoying the ride so far. So far, so good. So far, so good. I'm also watching Full Wars. Uh, the new installment. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dan, it's so good. It's so good so far. Oh, my God. It's so good. Full Wars. I love Full Wars. It's so good. It's so good. It's glad to have it back. Well, before we move on to uh, what Dinah's watching, because he's the last one, uh, just to note, uh, as somebody who has watched uh, both season two of Boku no Hero and uh, Food Wars, I'm not watching them uh, for the season, because I'm just going to, those are the type of shows I like to wait until the whole thing is out, so I can just watch them leisurely, like four or five episodes a night. Uh, but once the season's over, I'm going to watch both of them. And then it's, I'm actually waiting for you, everyone's consensus on Steins Gate Zero before I decide to watch that. So far, it seems like the consensus is good, so that's, that's nice to hear. Yeah, it's good so far. So, uh, so far, so good. All right, Dino, what the fuck are you watching? <laughs> Aside from the continuing series from last season being Darling in the Franks, Seven Deadly Sins, and also pretty much a lot of shows that Numa mentioned, Steins Gate Zero, Tokyo Ghoul, Food Wars, those are all amazing. I'm also watching Sword Art Online Gungale Alternative <laughs> because I'm not a biggest hater of Sword Art Online, unlike a lot of people. And I'm Josh. just curious on what they do with this series. <laughs> then is it actually good? I didn't check it out. I mean, I'm a Sword Art fan of some of the material. I'm not a hater. Yeah, hit, hit or miss. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's how I kind of uh, take the series. It doesn't have Kirito. It doesn't have Asuna. It's completely different characters. Oh. Not selling me, Dan. You're not selling me. <laughs> I really, it's not bad, but it's <laughs> nothing stellar. But if something does happen, okay. it's not a bad watch. If, if you're free, mm-hmm. check it out. Maybe it'll entice you. Okay. Uh, the main character is a lolly, mm. but mm. she's a 20, 21 year old lolly, I think. Okay. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, okay. She's pretty good at the gun that she's holding. Uh, so uh, that's that. Uh, um. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, we're just like, uh, no. <laughs> It just sounds like Dinah playing a girl in a game, basically. <laughs> so. I, I, I mean, I was like, I'm thinking like this, Captain. I'm like, man, if I really want to, I just get a camera. I just go go, go down where, where Dan <laughs> just live. Follow with just follow Dan, man. Face cam. Yeah, but aside from that, I am uh, watching one more show, and that is a show that finished last season, and that is called A Place for the Universe. Right, right, right. Uh, it's the show in which they go to Antarctica and stuff, and it's just such a relaxing and nice show. It's probably one of the i'm not the biggest fan of slice of life but this is probably one of the best slice of life i've seen in a while so definitely recommend it. it's heartwarming it's about a group of girls fulfilling their dreams and it's just wonderful so definitely recommend it sounds good well, i do plan on starting one other show because uh, i'm curious about it. it's being made by studio feel some people have made uh Suki Akire. it's being i think the show's called uh hina matsuri i oh, want to try it it's it's funny it's funny. It's, it is yes oh, good it's, good good yes it's funny it's funny i think it reminds me of Gitama a lot Oh, cool, cool. Um, yeah, that, that that was one show I wanted to try out. I just haven't had time to do so yet. Okay, so Josh, on your side, uh, anything else you want to talk about anime-wise? So uh, I definitely recommend anyone who hasn't checked out Darling in the Frank to check it out. It is unnecessarily sexual. Unnecessarily. Unnecessarily. But uh, I do think that Zero Two is the best thing to happen to anime. Um, so... Yes, <laughs> preach. Preach. So there you have it, boys and girls. So now, uh, with those uh, glorious uh, preachments made, uh, Josh, is that going to be your recommendation of the week, or is there a show you would like to recommend for everybody to go watch and see? Oh, no, that's my recommendation for the week, absolutely. That would be the recommendation of the episode, then. Um, sounds good. Well, then, once again, uh, thanks, Josh, for joining us, and uh, your dog as well. Uh, I appreciate the both of you making time to come to our episode. But uh, not not Josh's dog, but Josh yourself. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you again, man. Thanks for uh, wanting to come on. Yeah, thanks. No, I- Absolutely, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it was, it was a pleasure having you. So uh, we'd love to have you on again sometime uh, and ask you more questions and have age-appropriate answers for you. You know, all about your hentai when you're eight years old, all, all the great stuff. 
They're not gonna go, you guys weren't looking at hentai when you were eight. <laughs> I think the first time I saw boobs, I was 10, so that wasn't too much older. But yeah, Josh, it was great having you. Uh, and But uh, honestly, thank you, everybody, for your questions. You can send your questions not only to Kitsu if you're a user on there, but if you listen to us on YouTube or iTunes or any other uh, social platform and it has the option for commenting, feel free to not just give us feedback on our episodes, but you can always leave us questions you like to ask. And as long as you have a name attached to it of some sort, uh, I will make a note of it. And if it's a good question, it will be in a later episode. Otherwise, as Josh said, get better questions. <laughs> But uh, all in all, uh, thank you all for everything. Uh, you can always check us out on YouTube, iTunes, uh, WordPress, you name it. All the links will be below attached and all the fun stuff. But uh, my name is Dokes. It was an absolute pleasure to have you all once again. Uh, and I'll see you again soon. Later. New no Kai here. Hey, it's Dinah. Uh, thank you, Josh, again for being on today's episode. And we will catch you all next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>